Um, I'm hoping that you've basically reached this part in your jaw turn and you're ready to now think about genetics. Now, this is a tricky bit to do from home, so I'm just going to talk through the key bits um, to try and get you through this next section. OK, so what we've learned about so far, which is quickly draw a basic animal cell. So, for example, in us, this is what all of our cells look like. So here would be our cell membrane and inside is our nucleus. Now, what we should know about inside our nucleus as humans, we have got DNA. Now, if you imagine taking a big ball of wool and giving it to a kitten, it would unravel very, very quickly and fill up your whole living room floor and the kitten would get into trouble. And what you would have to do is sit and wind up all the wool again until it formed a nicely wee ball of wool and it was nice and small to fit into a nice little basket somewhere. So that is basically what our cells do. This would be our DNA. We've got tons of it, so it takes up too much space. So we wind it all up into these structures called chromosomes. And in our cells, we have got 46, which are arranged as pairs. And the reason, hopefully, you've maybe figured out already, the reason that they are arranged in pairs, so they're exactly the same size, they contain all the same genes, are because one came from mum and one came from your dad. So it has all the same basic information. So for example, along here, because it's made up of DNA, there'll be a, a, a wee section of DNA. So let's imagine it's that area there. And it's found on your mum's and your dad's DNA. And in that section, they are called genes. There's specific sections that code for a characteristic. So let's imagine for the sake of this, let's imagine this gene codes for freckles. Now we know that we don't all have freckles. So there can't just be one gene almost. There has to be a version that gives you freckles and a version that doesn't. So those versions of genes are called alleles. And depending on which one you inherit, it will make you look different. So in this case, we might have no freckles, no freckles, and it looks like we have no freckles. We might inherit one that's for no freckles and that one, one version that will give us freckles. But here we would still have no freckles. But we might also get one for freckles from mum and a version of yes for freckles from dad. And it means that we will look like we have freckles. So why does this happen in the middle? The reason for that is if you imagine a game of rock, paper, scissors, and we take scissors and paper, scissors wins. Even though it's a 50-50 a chance, scissors still wins because it's the dominant one, it's stronger. And that's the same as here. No freckles is the equivalent of the scissors. It's called the dominant allele. Okay. And if you have freckles, that is the kind of less strong one. And we call that recessive. It can be easily masked by the other allele. So if you have no freckles, which is dominant, and a yes freckles, it means that you will still have no freckles because it's the dominant version or allele of that gene. So if this was the allele, let's kind of um, colour in our dominant one. So this is for no freckles. And instead of writing no freckles all the time, we're going to give it a letter to make it quicker. Now we choose a letter where the capital letter and the lowercase letter look different. So let's give it a capital R because it's dominant. And let's say for the allele that is for having freckles, yes freckles, we know it's recessive, so we're going to give it the lowercase letter. So everybody in every body cell is going to have 
two copies of that gene. Depending on what they have, that's going to influence the appearance of any potential offspring that they might have. Now, a crucial part of this that makes it a little bit more complicated is whilst our body cells will have two copies of each allele, our sex cells don't. And it's the sex cells that are going to be important in forming and making offspring. So if this was an individual person, say that that whole thing there, that's mum. When a, a female goes to produce egg cells, whatever is in that one body cell, that gets split. And this one will form an egg and this one will go into another egg. So this female would have half the eggs containing the version for having freckles and half of her eggs would have the version of the gene for no freckles. So if that egg met a sperm or this egg met a sperm, you're going to influence what that offspring looks like. And the way to think about that is very straightforward. So we use these things called Punnett squares. And this allows us to think based on the alleles that each individual parent has, what's the likely offspring that they can have. So let's take mum and say the versions of the alleles that she has are two alleles for no freckles. And say dad has got both alleles code for having freckles. So mum has no freckles, but dad has freckles. Okay. Now, because both of both parents, all their alleles are the same, it doesn't matter because all of her eggs will have big R and all of dad's sperm will have little R. We set up in this Punnett square, so you draw this kind of shape here and you can put one parent's alleles up the top and we split them out because this represents the two possible egg types that she can have. And in dad, all of his sperm cells will carry the recessive allele. And then we say, if this egg and this sperm meet, we will have this combination of alleles. If it was the other possible egg and that sperm, and then this one and this one, and then this one and this one. So regardless of what happens, if these two people here have a child, all of their cells will carry the allele for no freckles and an allele for freckles. Because this one is dominant, all children, all offspring, will not have freckles. Okay, let's think of one more example. So let's now say that mum has got a, a dominant allele and a recessive. And let's say that dad is the same. Now, when they go to make their, let's draw our punnett square. When mum goes to make eggs, half of her eggs will have the dominant allele and half will have the recessive. And when dad produces sperm, half of the sperm will have the dominant and half will have the recessive. So depending on which egg meets, let's try and draw, oh, it's not to scale. Um, which egg and which sperm meet, so it could be this one and this one, it could be that one and that one, it could be that one and that one. You have to think of all the different possible combinations of eggs and sperm that could meet. So this Punnett square allows us to do that in a really clear way. And then this egg and this sperm, and then this egg and this sperm. Okay, so if, sometimes if you visualise in this way, it can be easier. So you just think of all the different possible combinations you can have of the eggs and sperm meeting up. And this is our offspring possibilities. Okay, so we can have two dominant alleles, which means the baby would have no freckles. We would also have a 50% chance of having this combination of alleles here, which also means no freckles because we've got the dominant allele is going to mask the recessive allele, but also we now have a one in four 
chance of having this combination of alleles, which means there's a 25% chance of freckles. Okay, oh, I need to word it, put in the word chance there. <laughs> okay, hopefully that makes sense. If you can now go back to the jotter and answer the remaining questions.